this video, a vitamin that saves you from medication side effects. The secret reason why you can't lose weight. And a supplement that saves patients from dialysis. Gathering here, I'm a doctor in natural medicine and today I want to share with you 5 tips about vitamins and other stuff that can make a huge difference in preventing your doctor from making some dumb mistake. Okay, I'm not happy to be saying this in 2024, but if primary care providers could start giving a f about their sickly patients, yeah, that will be great. What's a goma? Gomer's an old person that takes up room in the hospital, doesn't have the common decency to die. And if yours doesn't, make sure you are following the 5 tips in this video. If you have CKD and you don't take your medications, you are not going to be able to, well, survive. Shocking, right? Unfortunately, sometimes taking your medications may require more effort than just popping a pill every day at the same time. Okay, let me explain. Fact, some medications can cause certain vitamins to pack their bags and leave your body like it's a bad reality TV show. And notice that I have used the word can in this phrase and not the word may. And if you hear a researcher say can, what they mean is it most surely will. So. What are the most common vitamin deficiencies your medications can cause? Well, let's talk about diuretics first, or as I like to call them, the p more pills. These are very often prescribed to sickly patients and despite being considered pretty safe, they can deplete your body of a long list of crucial micronutrients. Vitamin B1, vitamin B2, calcium and magnesium are all going to be lower when taking a diuretic. And then there is metformin, the trusty steed of diabetes patients. This bad boy will drain your folate and vitamin B12 faster than a teenager drains a data plan, which is like saying your energy level will drop so low, you might start to envy slots for their high-speed lifestyle. And if feeling like a phone stuck at 1% battery all day, every day, is not fun enough, consider adding an ARB or an ACE inhibitor to the mix. About 90% of CKD patients are on this, so you're in good company. These meds will rob you of zinc vitamin B6, magnesium, and CoQ10. Imagine feeling like a snowman in a sauna, that's right, melting away into a puddle of nutrient deficiencies. And your kidneys, they're going to feel like they've been abandoned in the Sahara Desert desperately wishing for an oasis that's never coming. So, to sum it up, some meds are like that friend who borrows your stuff and never returns it. What to do then? Well, first of all, start supplementing vitamins of the B group. Also notice how I mentioned calcium and magnesium several times here. Yeah, you probably need those two. And if you want to know more in depth what vitamins are a must for CKD patients, my video up here and also down in description is for you. Okay, up next, here's a tip that the ladies in my audience could potentially find very useful. Raise your hand if you tried to lose weight but without any success. Raise your hands because probably it's not your fault. Losing weight can feel like trying to ice skate uphill in a snowstorm. Nearly impossible. Just eat less, they say. Just move more, they say. What they never tell you is that if you have kidney disease, you're way, way more likely than the average gene to have an underactive thyroid. And for they, I mean your doctor. And for never tell you, I mean that 60% or more of CKD patients with a thyroid condition are never diagnosed. Yep, your thyroid is playing hide and seek with your health and it's winning. Surprise! 
You are the proud owner of a sneaky underactive thyroid that's sabotaging your weight loss efforts and your overall health. And to make things worse, having an underactive thyroid doesn't just make winning the battle with diabetes and kidney disease as likely as finding a unicorn in your backyard. It's also a cause for bone density loss, a condition called renal osteodystrophy that will permanently damage your bones. I mean, sounds like something your doctor should check for, right? So my advice, if you are having symptoms such as fatigue, cold intolerance, and inexplicable weight gain is get your thyroid checked. Ah no, even better, get your thyroid checked. If you are a woman and you have kidney disease, yeah, that sounds better. Because let's be real, nothing says I care about my health like discovering the hidden saboteur lurking in your neck. Your thyroid might be low energy, but that doesn't mean you have to be. In fact, thyroid problems are very treatable, but you need the right medications and the right diagnosis. Okay guys, so we've just seen what to do when diabetes is being as cooperative as a cat in a bathtub. And we've also figured out what to do when your medications seem more interested in plotting your demise than helping you out. Time now to bust another medical error that's more common in cigarette patients than pineapple on pizza. Blood pressure medications not working as they should. But why does that happen and what vitamins should we take to stop this issue? Well, let's see. Most CKD patients take at least one blood pressure medication, but for many, that's not enough. So they start with an ARB like Losartan. This is very common. Spoiler alert, it's not enough. So their doc throws in a beta blocker. Nope, still not cutting it. All right, let's add a diuretic. Oh, still nothing? How about a calcium channel blocker? And faster than you can say, my blood pressure is as stable as a Jenga tower. Your kidneys are toasted. Oh, that's normal. Just start dialysis, says the doctor. Kidney disease is supposed to end up like that. They insist. It's not true that kidney disease always ends up with dialysis. Not everyone has to end up hooked to a machine unless, of course, their doctor makes a big enough mistake. Let me explain. There is one recent finding about how your blood pressure works that most doctors don't know about yet. I'm talking about vitamin D and the way a deficiency in this vitamin may prevent your blood pressure medications from working. As I was saying, if your blood pressure is too high, one of the most prescribed medications in CD patients is either an ARB or an ACE inhibitor. These medications are used because they act on the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, all right? They are also called RAS inhibitors for that reason. The RAS is like the puppet master of blood pressure, fluid, and electrolyte balance in your body. When this system goes haywire, your blood pressure follows suit. That's why we pop meds to keep it in check. But guess what else plays a crucial role in modulating this system? You get it. Vitamin D. If you are deficient in this kidney-saving vitamin, your ACE inhibitors and ARBs are about as useful as a chocolate teapot. And what is your doctor going to do? Prescribe you more of these meds, of course. Which is basically like trying to put out a fire with gasoline. These medications are tough on your kidneys. This is why one of the smartest ways to decrease your needs for these medications is by making sure your vitamin D levels are in the right range. In fact, a recent study concluded that supplementing vitamin D can significantly lower blood pressure in people that are either older than 50, obese, or in those with vitamin D deficiency. Now, even if you are younger than 50 and you have a healthy body weight, consider that up to 90% of people with kidney problems have low levels of this vitamin, right? So always make sure you are not deficient in this vitamin. And by the way, if you want to learn more about what vitamins and supplements really help with blood pressure, my video up here and also down in the description is for you. Has your doctor told you that your potassium is too high and that you need to limit bananas and tomatoes? Well, buckle up, buttercup, because what they should have really said is ditch the hamburger instead. What? Oh, yes. 
I can already hear the carnivores losing their collective minds. But hamburgers don't have potassium. They scream. Well, before you start rioting in the streets with your meat cleavers, let me explain. It's true that hamburgers don't have potassium, but it's not true that they can't get your serum potassium level out of control. Hey, I'm not saying the occasional burger will be your doom unless, of course, you have CKD. Because trust me when I say that following a renal diet is hard enough even without cheating on it. But how does cheating your diet with a hamburger increase your serum potassium? Fact, and this is something I have seen both in my experience with patients and in medical literature. If you have CKD, you are very likely eating too much protein. It's never the other way around. Even if you are eating plant-based or if you are a vegan, I mean, I still have to meet a single patient that's voluntarily eating less protein than they should. And science confirms that overshooting your protein goal is very common as we can read. And now you may be thinking, if I'm supposed to eat less protein to protect my kidneys but end up eating more, the worst that can happen is a little kidney damage, right? My potassium is gonna be fine. Well, actually, that's not how it works. I mean, yeah, you are going to damage your kidneys. But there is more than that. Eat too much protein and your love values will go crazier than a cat with a laser pointer. I mean, how do I even know if you are eating too much protein? It's not like I'm hiding in your pantry taking notes, right? Nope, I don't need to. I just need to read your lab test reports. When a CKD patient eats too much protein, they tend to have a too high bond to creatinine ratio, and that's clue number one. Their serum phosphorus levels also start a skyward ascent, and they become prime candidates for proteinuria. And guess what? If you're a burger enthusiast, your serum bicarbonate will be as low as a limbo champion. Why, you may ask? Because the body uses bicarbonate, a base, to neutralize all the acid coming from meat and protein. But now, there is not enough bicarbonate to go round. And do you know what happens when your serum bicarbonate is too low? Your potassium will shoot up like a pole vaulter aiming to break a world record. Yeah, the human body has some hilariously cruel ways of saying, screw you, stop feeding me junk. Now, if your duck is on the ball like me, they'll spell it out. Protein is your enemy and you might get some sodium bicarbonate and a phosphate binder to help out. But some ducks, bless their hearts, won't do the detective work. They'll just say avoid avocados and spinach. Which, spoiler alert, doesn't solve the problem. These foods actually help detoxify your system. So trust me when I say that this roller coaster of wacky lab values and terrible dietary advice is not a ride you want a front row seat on. I mean, given the repercussions, it's better to cheat on your taxes, your spouse, or even at the casino than to cheat on your diet. Just kidding, but seriously, don't cheat on your diet. By the way, guys, if you want to learn more about what detoxifier work best for people with CKD, my video up here and also down in the description is for you. Okay, guys, as I was saying, with kidney disease, strictly limiting the amount of protein we get every day is the way to go if improving kidney health is the target. But what if we are following a super strict diet and the protein we get every day is too little? Isn't that bad? Well, yeah, of course it is. There is even a fancy medical term for it, protein energy wasting. This condition is characterized by increased inflammation and loss of muscle and body mass. Basically, your body is turning into a flabby, weak mess. We need to avoid that, of course. How, you may ask. Now, guys, do you remember what I was saying about me not hiding in your pantry? Because I don't need to. 
Well, what's telling me how much protein you eat is your BUN or BUN. And it's not hiding in your pantry. It's hiding in your lab test reports. BUN or blood urea nitrogen is a way to measure nitrogen, one of the toxins released by protein metabolism. Now, this toxin is released when the body breaks down the amino acid protein is made of. All right. So the thing is, your body loves these amino acids. It's practically in a committed relationship with them. But your kidneys, they're the ones left to clean up the mess these amino acids make. And they're not happy about it. I mean, what would you say if you had to do the dishes every single time someone in your house decided to cook a three-course meal and leave everything in the sink? You'd probably say, I'm not your mate, right? And just like in a normal relationship, when someone tells you I'm not your maid too many times and you never listen, yeah, you end up in dialysis. Hmm. I wonder how we could get more amino acids to protect the tissue in our body without making our kidneys clean up the nitrogen mess. All that we will need are amino acids without the nitrogen, right? And... That's exactly where the supplement I was mentioning comes into play. This is a special type of amino acids called keto analogs that some patients take when they follow a diet that's very strict and very limiting when it comes to protein. And well, it works. Supplementing these special amino acids when on a low protein diet is a way to significantly delay dialysis in advanced stage CKD patients, as we can read. So to sum it up, you can have your amino acids and eat them too without making your kidneys throw a tantrum. Because trust me, when your kidneys are happy, everyone's happy. There are a few brands that sell these amino acids, including Fresenius, Albutrix, and Kidorina. These are prescription supplements, all right? So consult your doctor if you think you need them. And if you want more tips to protect your kidneys, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.